Hello, everybody. We are back again here this Wednesday. A um, little late with recording. This one had a bit to do this morning as well as uh, during the day. But um, this will be out by around 5 p.m. today, Wednesday. And the next one will be out very early Friday morning. I will be sure to it. Uh, before we go ahead and get started with talking about the Patriots versus the Texans, um, I just wanted to let you know that on Friday I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I know I said in my first podcast with how the scheduling is going to go, I talked about how um, we're just going to do normal episodes Wednesday and Friday. Well, Friday is going to be a little different. Friday, I'm going to cover any big Patriots news, if there is any, um, and kind of give a brief outlook on how I think Sunday is going to go and the weekend, um, but... Friday is going to be more of an around the league type of episode, which might, which means it might be a little longer, more around 45 minutes to an hour. Um, because I'm going to want to talk, I just, I kind of want to expand it a bit. So if, if you enjoy hearing about other, uh, things in the league, like other games, other teams like Lamar Jackson, I could go on for a long time about how I think he's going to shape out, you know, the giants, the Cardinals, uh, the Dolphins with Brian Flores. There's, there's a lot of interesting, you know, growing situations that a lot of people, you know, they don't really uh, or they'd like to know more about um, rather than just the Patriots. So on Fridays, I'm going to do a longer episode about stuff around the league. And then uh, Monday and Wednesday will just be normal episodes. Um, so, yeah. And Mondays, I might not get them out every Monday. I'll try my absolute best. Um but Mondays are still a little iffy. Uh, but I can assure you Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Those three are for sure. Sunday morning is always definite with how I think the game's going to go that day. Um, and I might actually post um, the pregame Saturday just because uh, it's a little hard to get many people to watch it if they only have six hours to watch it or three hours to watch it before the actual game is and it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but yeah, so I'll try to do that. But anyways, starting today, let's talk about the Patriots versus the Texans. That was, that's a tough game to watch. I cannot lie. Um, yeah, I said last week it was 50, 50, whether we were really going to try and watching the game, I kind of felt like we tried, which was a little disappointing. Um, uh, I, I can't tell if our defense did everything they could, but I can tell offensively we definitely tried. Um, the running game struggled. I mean, James White, it was interesting to see him. I think we, I honestly think James White should take the majority of the snaps because I personally, I think James White is a lot better at uh, maneuvering past people than Sony Michelle is. I mean, James White had 14 carries for 79 yards. Sony Michelle had 10 carries for 45. I would definitely like to see James White get more carries. Um,. But yeah, we were down 28-3 to at one point, and it's funny because it was the same stadium, same score as the Super Bowl. We almost came back 28-22 with around 50 seconds left. Uh, Brandon Bolden got a hand on the onside kick but couldn't pull it in, ended up hitting it out of bounds, um, and it was Texans' ball. But in terms of the passing game, uh, I mean, it was pretty bad the first half, pretty brutal. And then the second half... Um, James White stepped it up. I mean, he had eight catches throughout the game for 98 yards, two touchdowns. Edelman had six catches for 106 and a touchdown. Um, James White is kind of inflated because of that big play uh, within the two minutes um, up the field that set up the Edelman touchdown. But still, the fact that they were able to create some sort of separation that late. Um, so, yeah, Brady threw 326, three touchdowns and a pick. I mean, it isn't bad, but again, it's more all about context. Um, the first half, we dug ourselves a big, big hole. It was 21-3 to at some point, and maybe halftime. I actually think it was 21-3 to in the third, and then 28-3. to three. Or, uh, what was it, 21-9 to nine or 28-9? to nine? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, we did not play... Uh, the best football at all. Um, defensively, we let uh, 
Deshaun Watson walk all over us. 18 for 25, 236 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, as well as one catch for six yards and a touchdown for Deshaun Watson. Uh, Kenny Stills, I mean, we double teamed Deshaun or Hopkins, and he still had five catches for 64. Uh, Kenny Stills, they attacked him, uh, three catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, we were able to shut down their running game really well. They only had they had less than uh, 50, or I think they had just around 50 yards the entire game on over 20 carries. So that was really good. I liked that. Um, but the the passing game, we still couldn't slow that down. Um, so that was definitely disappointing. But, you know, we lost, and we're sitting at 10-2, and two, and there's some interesting things here. It's just Brady, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's a disappointing loss is really all I can say about it. I mean, there's not really much else to say, you know. I mean, it's obvious that we just didn't play as good as we could have. Um, we've seen better play against other teams, and the Texans are a good team. And they shut us down on offense throughout the majority of the game, and they shut us down on defense throughout the majority of the game. Touchdown every quarter. We cannot allow that. And sadly, we allowed it. And we did not. I mean, the very first drive, it looked like it was going to be a good game. And we had to settle for a field goal. It's like, eh, whatever. Our offense found a way to produce. And then it seemed like the rest of the half, we couldn't find anything at all. It was brutal. But, you know, we lost. We're 10-2. and two. I got my money on us for the Chiefs game. I don't think we're going to lose um, in Foxborough against the Chiefs. I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but we'll see. Um, I'm hoping for a Patriots win. And, you know, it's just disappointing. Patriots lost to the Texans. There's not much else I can say about it. Uh, it's just disappointing. We, we have the players to do it. I mean, heck, we had a worse receiving core last year. Um, but, yeah, you know, Mohamed Sanu needs to step up. Keel Harry needs to step up. Edelman's really the only one out there stepping it up game to game. He's your only consistent wide receiver. Other than that, there's really nothing. Because um, right now, the, <laughs> the simplest way to beat us is just double-team Edelman. And nobody else seems to be able to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the interception... By Brady, I don't think it was his fault. I mean, Nikhil Harry was coming on an in route over the middle. And your job as the receiver, even if it's close, I mean, Nikhil Harry, if you rewatch the play, when Brady throws, he is closer to Brady than the defender is. And a big body receiver like that, your job on an in route is to make sure the defender doesn't jump in front of you. But Nikhil Harry, when the ball is thrown to him, kind of started to fall back like he was going to try and possession catch it. But when there's someone right next to you, that means that Brady's looking for a tight window throw, and Brady threw it into the right window, but Keel Harry didn't go towards the ball. He fell away from it, which made it super easy for the defender to just go up and um, jump in front of Keel Harry. Keel Harry didn't put up a fight. Um, I don't think that was Brady's fault, and I think that's why Brady was out there screaming at the receivers afterwards. I mean, it's sad. <laughs> To say the least, it's sad uh, to watch our offense out there. But, you know, again, we just got to keep open. Keep open that we get better. We were 9-5 and five at one point last year, and everybody counted us out. Um, I think we'll go somewhere around 12-4, and 13-3, and three, and maybe even 14-2. and two. And I, I say we still win the AFC East. Um, but anyways... On to the next topic. Um, okay, so there is a video going around, um, kind of just a clip from Sunday's matchup against the Texans where Brady is yelling at his receivers um, during the game. And, you know, <laughs> I said this last week, um, and I'm going to say it again this week. It, I get why Brady's mad. I don't blame him. His receivers aren't doing what they need to do, you know. Mohamed Sanu, he had three catches all night, um, and Gilhary had none. That's your number two and your number three receiver. 
your number two and your number three combined for three catches. That's not good. In a big Sunday night football game against another AFC team that is equally in the run for the playoffs, that could possibly affect your home field advantage, that's not good at all. You need better performance from your receivers. And I understand why Brady's mad. There's no separation. Um, the announcer on Sunday night said, you know, or Tony Romo said that he, he when he was watching Brady yell, he said one of the words he heard him or kind of saw that he mouthed out was separation. And I get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, there is no separation from the receivers. I mean, Brady's sitting back there. With a good amount of time to throw. I mean, I loved that. I loved how much time he had to throw. Um, but he's got a good amount of time to throw. And he's, he can't let it go. Because there's nobody open. He's looking around. He's looking around. Looks back and forth. And back and forth across the field. Goes through all four of his reads. And nobody's open. Because once Edelman is double teamed, there's nobody else that seems to be open. You know, it's <laughs> nobody else. Nikhil Harry's over there, single coverage, and he can't get open. Um, Mohamed Sanu isn't getting open. I mean, it's really, really not good. We traded for Mohamed Sanu, um, a second-round pick, and he is not panning out. He did in the very first game against the Ravens. He had nine catches for 81 yards. Or, I don't know how many catches, but he had 81 yards and a touchdown. And since then, he has not done anything, really. Um, Nikhil Harry hasn't done anything at all. He's racked up four catches for 18 yards and a touchdown in three games. I mean, come on. He's had more than enough time now to get used to it. Now is when he's got to start getting open for Brady. I mean, when an undrafted free agent has more catches and yards than you do in these past three games and you're a first-round pick, that says something about your level of play. That means you're not playing to what teams valued you at. You're not playing to what they expected of you and what the Patriots expect of you. That's just not good enough. Our receiving core is just sad. I mean, it's it looks good on paper. It looks pretty decent. But they aren't putting it together. They're not getting separation. They're not open for Brady to throw to. I mean, we got the offensive line. Figured that out. Now we got to figure out how to get our receivers open. I mean, I thought that it was just the O-line, honestly, but now I kind of see he's got time, but still it isn't panning out. Well, it's the receivers. And I don't really know why, you know? It's like, I don't get it. I mean, they've, they've got talent at receiver. Mohamed Sanu is a talented guy. Edelman's a talented guy, and Edelman getting double covered most games is still getting 100 yards, around 100 yards a game, or 75, 80, whatever. Nikhil Harry, he's got a lot of talent. There's no reason why he shouldn't be winning one-on-one -on -one at least half the time. He is a talented guy physically. Um, we've got talent on this offense, but it doesn't just it just doesn't seem to be panning out. And another thing you see is. You know, Brady threw a deep ball, and there was nobody near it. You could see Dorsett in the corner of the screen running, kind of not knowing where to go, and that was on a third down. Then it cuts to Brady walking off the field, and he just looks so done. I mean, he looks like he doesn't want to be there. I mean, those receivers, they're not where they're supposed to be half the time. You know, Brady's trying to make this offense work but the receivers just aren't running the right routes they aren't doing the right thing and that's a big reason why this offense isn't panning out is because if you don't run the right route if you aren't in the spot Brady wants you to be he's not going to throw it to you <laughs> he is not going to risk a pick he's going to call you out for it too that's why he was yelling at those receivers on the sideline he <laughs> it's got to be frustrating for him and yeah, I'm a Patriots fan, but right now it's like, I honestly would be, like, good for you, Brady, if Brady this offseason gets signed to a team like the Chargers. 
which rumor has it would be his target. Um, like, good for you. And I honestly, at this point, I'm more, I'm less surprised than I ever have been in terms of surprise as to if he would leave. Because with the way this offense is going around him and with the way that they let go of Antonio Brown and they're not bringing him back even though he apologized and all this talk and just... From Brady's eyes, it's got to feel like, you know, you let the answer go. I mean, yeah, he's a PR nightmare, nightmare, but he there's the thing you got to take into effect is that he didn't post on Instagram when he was with the Patriots. I mean, maybe he did once, but he, there was no talk about his so, social media postings. There was no big um, media things about Antonio Brown in the week and a half he was with the Patriots. It's really interesting that in the week and in the week and a half he was there, there were no big scandals going on until it came out that there was a lawsuit against him, and that lawsuit has gone nowhere. <laughs> It has gone nowhere. And Brady's got to be thinking, guys, we let the answer walk out the door. And the answer's knocking on the door, but we're not letting him in. And I say, God, I hate falling to this, but the just how bad our offense is? Like, last year was different because there were games, you know, where against the Chiefs or against certain teams – our offense was pretty good. You know, we were, we were looked like a top tier offense some games last year during the regular season. So it wasn't you know against bad teams, our offense was good, or against mediocre teams, our offense was good. And even in some of the big games, like against the Chiefs, our offense was really good. But this year, it's like we're not even good against bad teams. We weren't even that good against the Dolphins. We punted a lot during the Dolphins or against the Dolphins. A lot of our points against those bad teams this year were defensive points. We have not scored a lot at all. I mean, it's sad. It's really sad. And it's really, really worrying. You know? Because this isn't about schemes anymore. It's about pure talent. It's about pure, are you doing your job? They're not doing their job. You know, last year, Brady wasn't mad. And the fact that he's mad now at his offense really worries me because that tells me that their offense isn't doing the right thing. You know, it's not them waiting to do the right thing. It's just them trying to do the right thing, and they can't do it. And what that tells me is that I don't know if our offense is going to be there by the postseason. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull off an end-of-the-game drive. I'm sure we will with Josh McDaniels, but I'm not sure we'll be able to keep up with another team. At this point, I mean, jeez, it is bad. It is real bad. Our offense is nowhere near good yet. Um, but, again, I just got to hope. You know, I got to hope. And like I said, you know, if Brady were to go to another team, I would just be like, good for you, man. <laughs> You're the team now that's going to get you talent. It's going to. Put a few extra bucks into getting you some talent and getting you some guys to work with, like Keenan Allen, um, that you can throw balls to and rely on them to get open at least half the time. But, I mean, that's that's that. That's all I have to say about that. I mean, Brady's yelling at the receivers. He has all the right to. He has all the right to. So... Um, Antonio Brown during the Sunday night football game kind of went crazy on Twitter. He was talking about how he said, put me in this game. And he posted a little thing, a little video, um, a little Christmas theme video of a clip, the clip of the touchdown, um, him hugging Brady, um, and a Patriots logo saying like, man, <laughs> Patriots, get your fans me for Christmas. Cause I'm sure they want it. And you know I want it. <laughs> I do. That would be one heck of a Christmas gift to see Antonio Brown back in a Patriots uniform because that would solve so many problems offensively. So many. It would transform our offense. It really, really would. It really, really would. I mean, 
Once you get Antonio Brown out there, they can't double team Antonio Brown and Julian Edelman without leaving Mohamed Sanu to fill an Edelman spot over the middle. If they got Antonio Brown who can get quick separation. We don't even need quick separation. You saw our offensive line on Sunday night. Antonio Brown, a deep threat. All we have is over the middle threats. A deep threat like Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown would pull focus away from defending our run game and into making sure Antonio Brown doesn't get open. Which would open up Sony Michelle and James White to do a lot more. James White would become a lot bigger of a role if Antonio Brown was out there. And Antonio Brown, man, he would go off. He wants it bad. And Antonio Brown, with an offensive mind like Josh McDaniels, Josh McDaniels would use Antonio Brown so well. You see now he's used Julian Edelman. I mean, imagine him with Antonio Brown, man. That would be great. It would be such a great move to pull him in to just make our offense that much better. It would be great. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. I'd say it's 90-10. 90% we don't, 10% we do. I mean, it's obvious how much Antonio Brown wants it. It's obvious, I'm sure, in the back of the head, every single play Brady's saying, you know, what? I wonder what would happen if Antonio Brown was out here right now. Um, I'm sure Josh McDaniels is thinking it, but in the end, it's Robert Kraft and uh, the team's is the team's choice. It's not just Brady's choice. It's not my choice. It's not your choice. It's their choice. And whatever they do, you gotta hope that it's not ignorance. You gotta hope that Kraft doesn't hang on to that one thing. Um, it was a pretty bad thing, <laughs> but I mean, hell. It's hard, real hard. So she said, um, <laughs> "It's real hard to watch this all go down." Um, Antonio Brown wants to come back. I want him back. At this, this at this point, it's like, oh, what's the risk? You know, you saw how he keeps his mouth shut when he's on our team. Now the lawsuit is gone i mean you gotta figure what's the risk you know <laughs> i mean what is the risk there really is none just get antonio brown back just l keep him on the team if anything happens let him go i mean you already did that but the one thing that happened wasn't antonio brown's fault i mean he can't keep someone else from filing a lawsuit against him um so, yeah, if he does anything that's directly his fault, then sure. Let him go. But you already have to pay him nine mil. Um, why not just bring him on to play? Just say, look, you already have guaranteed money. We'll let you on just to play. I'm sure you'd love just to play. I don't even think you would care about having all that much money, to be 100% honest. Um, but, yeah. God. I'd love Antonio Brown. I really, really would. So, Santa, if you're listening, get Antonio Brown back on the Patriots because, by God, do we need him. <laughs> and at least right now we do. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe our offense pulls it together some weird way. And I would... I'd, <laughs> I'd say it was a miracle if they do. But as of right now, it is not looking like we can survive much longer at this point. I mean, jeez. It's not good. Not, not good. Our defense didn't even look that great against the Texans. So, I mean, what, what does that have to say? <laughs> God. I said we were a defensive team, but at this point, it's like a defensive team can hold good offenses to a low amount of points. They got 28 points. The Ravens got 41. You know, maybe Belichick isn't trying against these teams. But, I mean, maybe he's saving all the best schemes for the playoffs for the offense. I don't know. Maybe something like that happens. But if it does, you, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm really, really struggling to have hope here in our offense. Really struggling. And I'm going to try to force myself to. I'm going to try to force myself to say, shut up. Shut up, dude. Just 
just trust. So I'll try my best to trust, and that's that. All right. We cannot seem to beat good teams, right? Is it that we can't beat good teams or that we simply won't? Um, I I'd say it's that we simply won't. I'm sitting here, you know, freaking out about how bad the offense is, but you got to remember, we shut down the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And to be fair, they hadn't beaten a team over 500. But I mean, we shut down their offense completely. Um, so you feel like if we can shut down the Cowboys' offense with all the talent they have, we should be able to shut down the Texans, right? Or we should be able to shut down, or at least slow down, the Texans and the uh, the Ravens, but we couldn't seem to do either. Couldn't seem to do either. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's more that we won't beat good teams. I don't think that it's necessarily we can't. I think that's necessarily we won't. Like I said last week, it's just when you play a team that you think you're going to have to play later in a more important game, um, why beat them now? Why not just wait till then? But, you know, it's it's still disappointing. I mean, last year we won against the Chiefs twice. Um, we won against good teams last year, good AFC teams. So it still doesn't make sense to me why we can't beat good AFC teams this year and still not win the Super Bowl. But, you know, it's whatever. It's fine. Um, I suppose we shall see when the time comes if we can beat them when it matters. Um, and it's starting to matter here against the Chiefs and in this last four stretches of games, which is why I wouldn't be surprised if we go 4-0 and and totally go balls out, balls against the wall, um, because we are currently tied with the Ravens at 10-2. and The Bills are at 9-3. and They are one game behind us. So if we lose to the... Chiefs, we could be tied with them. <laughs> and then it would become a much more important game against the Bills. Um, the Bengals will beat, the Dolphins will beat, but the Bills and the... Uh, the Bills uh, will beat them. I, th- I say we beat the Bills. I say we beat the Bengals. I say we beat the Dolphins. Puts us at 13-2. and two. Now, Do we beat the Chiefs? I say yes, just to try to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs now that we are tied up against the Ravens um, because now that we lost the Ravens it's like if the Ravens went out and we went out they get home field advantage in the championship game if they play in the championship game which I wouldn't be surprised if they do Um, so that is definitely worrisome (laughs) it's it's definitely worrisome uh yeah, and there's other teams that can still come up. Like the Texans can still come up. They're they're still up there. They're eight and four. Um, I don't think we'll lose two games here at the end because that would bring us way down, possibly below the Bills. Um, and I don't think we're gonna let the Bills get ahead of us in the AFC East. But uh, yeah, I, th- I say it's very likely that we win out just because of the stakes in terms of playoff mode. I don't know if Belichick um, expected the Ravens to be at 10-2 and two right now, um, and if he j- kind of just relied that we were going to beat the Ravens um, and the Texans, but it's whatever, or that we were going to beat the Texans and that the Ravens weren't going to win out, which is why we kind of let them stomp us. But, you know, it's it's fine. It's whatever. Uh, um it's just it's hard to watch our offense as a Patriots fan against these good teams. Um, against any team, our offense is yet to have a good game since the Ravens. Since the bye week, our offense is yet to have a good game. So, you know, all bets off. I, I'll I don't. Well, we'll see, right? <laughs> we shall see. Um, I don't know what to say. It's. I I think we'll make it to the Super Bowl. I think we'll win the Super Bowl, but it is very hard for me to make a case right now for anyone who wants to argue. It is very hard to make a case for that right now. I mean, we are 10-2, and, and this brings me to my next point. 
And my next point is that last year, we were 9-5 and five at one point. 9-5. and five. We are 10-2 and two right now, guys. 10-2. and two. We were 9-5 and five last year, and we still won the Super Bowl. Nobody expected it. Now we're 10-2 and two this year, and we're, we're on our way. You know, I still don't think it's time to implode and to throw everything away and to say, geez, we are done. <laughs> but I do think it is time to step it up. And, you know, that little concern, that's fine. But don't, don't throw us out the window because you saw what happened last year. Um, this year we're 10 and two, we were nine and five last year. I wouldn't be surprised if we make it to the Super Bowl. I was surprised when we made it last year. (laughs) I wasn't surprised. I was just, um, I don't know. I felt kind of out of place. It felt weird because of how we played in the regular season compared to how we played in the postseason. It just felt weird. Um, but you know, (laughs) it's whatever. (laughs) <laughs> it's we're a good team we're 10 and 2 we'll figure it out we'll make it to the super bowl we'll have a playoff run like we have had for the last four out of five years we've made it to the super bowl except for 50 against peyton manning and the broncos peyton manning isn't here anymore so last four four out of five years we've been in the super bowl I say we make it again. We've been to the Super Bowl three years in a row. I say we make it a fourth. We have a better team this year than we did last year. And last year we made it to the Super Bowl. That's my case. I rest it. We were 9-5 last year. We're 10-2 this year. Do not freak out. We're Super Bowl bound, baby. See you Friday. Ow. And uh, like and subscribe, please. (laughs) But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Leave comments on anything else you guys want me to talk about. Um, if you want the episodes to be longer, if you want them to be shorter, either one. Um, but either way, thank you for watching and see you Friday.